Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary and back doing these YouTube videos again. Um, as long as we're still worried about venturing out and being with people, um, these uh, videos that I put on YouTube work very well for everyone. Uh, so I either do Zoom classes or I do YouTube videos. And um, today we're going to be doing this mushroom cottage, which I have adapted for Valentine's Day. And I just put out a couple of other pieces that I've also done for Valentine's Day. And I will be putting a video up on YouTube. I have this video up right now for the children's classes, and I will do one for the adults also. So I just wanted you to take a look. So if you're interested, you can either contact me um, on the email that you have, or if anyone doesn't have my email, you can contact me under Rosemary Ceramics, uh, message me on Facebook, and I have the kits available. And uh, let's get started. So this is pretty simple. It only really has four colors. And um, these are stickers, which I gave you in your little packages, okay? And the stick, we will glue onto the sign, which my friend was very nice to make so many of these little signs for me on her Cricut machine. And um, we'll do that later. We'll probably have to paint the stick. But for now, let's get started on the cottage. So I always start with the lightest color and the largest brush that works for the area that I'm, I'm working in. I, I noticed that they put these little warnings in any of these things that are lanterns um, to watch. You know, they have to protect themselves about using an open flame. So I, I recommend using a tea light in here. I don't know if it lights up enough, but that's the safest way to go about it and not use a, a, a candle. And if you do, you have to be very careful where you put it and watch it, okay? So I'm gonna start with the whites. I'm starting with the lightest color. I'm gonna do white on the whole top. Now those stickers go on top of the white so you don't have to work around the stickers. So just paint that part right now. Okay, so big brush, I'm using a big brush and I'm just gonna paint the white nice and smooth. And I always go back and forth across it to make sure that it's smooth before I dip for more paint. And I try not to get it where the red is gonna go. Red is a hard color to cover. So, I mean, it will cover if you do a lot of coats, but it's better when it works straight on the bisque and not over another color. So I'm just trying to be a little careful on that area. We do have another color under here too, which I didn't get. I'll have to get in a minute to pull that out. Okay, so Jerry gently go around. I'm using the big brush to go around this but you can use a small brush to do your edging and then go back to the big brush for the bigger area. I've also adapted this cottage for St. Patrick's Day, which I'll show you in a little while too. So it, it's hard when so many of you have done so many of my classes to come up with something that's new and original. So sometimes it pays to take something that you would never think it was a holiday item and make it into a holiday item. Now, I'm not gonna be painting this perfectly because I um, wanna just get through it and give you an idea about what to do with it. But you could take your time. You can always pause the video and then catch up with me. I'm winding up with so many extra samples from doing videos because I have a sample done and then I have to do another one while I'm on the video. So if anybody ever wants to purchase any, just let me know. Everything I do videos on or a Zoom class on, I have extra pieces. Pretty soon I'm gonna to have to open up a store to sell these pieces. Okay. Now under here, I just realized there is another color. Under here, I did the um, the gray. Oh no, the gray is under there, so it's not another color. Okay, the gray is under there. I do have the gray out. So after we do the white, we'll put the gray under under that area. If you notice, I'm doing everything with the big brush, but you have to work work however you you know is good for you. 
I'm used to working with a big brush, but maybe a lot of you aren't, so take your small brush, take your time. Okay. During this crazy time, thank God for YouTube and for Zoom. Some of the libraries host me in doing Zoom classes and others don't do Zoom, so then I do the YouTube videos. And they're always up there, so you can always go back and look at any of the others. All my videos are on YouTube under Rosemary Ceramics. And then you could just flip through and see which one you'd like to watch. I believe this one is titled um, Valentine Ceramic Cottage. And the white sometimes needs a second coat. Uh, I think it gets a little better coverage if you if you do it twice. It keeps it seals it a little bit better. You could even see the difference in it as I'm putting it on. But I won't waste my time with that right now. I'll move on to my gray. So I'm going to do the gray underneath the house, underneath the roof. Okay, I'm going to take a smaller brush to do that. These brushes I purchased for the kids on Amazon, and they're really inexpensive. But let me tell you, it holds a great point, and it's a great brush, so I've been using it. Okay, so under here, this is the area under the roof, the um, ridged area under the roof. I did that in gray. I miss seeing everyone. I miss coming to the libraries and teaching the classes. But this is a, an alternative to that. But I hope eventually we do get back live. But I think that Zoom and YouTube are going to be with us for a long time. Even after we get back, I think that this is an option when the weather is not good. Or if I do a library class and people can't make it, I can still put the videos up on YouTube and people can purchase the, a kit if I put it together and do it at another time if they can't make the library class. When my uh, two of the libraries had contacted me and asked me to do a Zoom class, this was in July, and I said to them, what's Zoom? I didn't know anything about Zoom. So I had to learn fast and it's worked out very well. I've been putting hundreds of kits together. Some libraries even order, one library ordered 120 kits, another library they're ordering in the hundreds. I feel like I, uh, assembly line work I have to do now putting these kits together. Now, I don't, I don't know if I dry brushed under here. Did I dry brush under there? I mean, I, I did the gray, and you could dry brush some white on top of the gray to give it some shadowing under there, too. And that when we go back, we're going to be doing some white dry brushing on the shutters. So when we do that, we can do the dry brushing underneath the house. Something else I was going to ask all of you, you know, I, uh, I do these videos and I don't ever see anybody's pieces. And you all have my email. Send me some pictures of the pieces when they're finished. I'd love to see them. I've been having the children do that now in some of the Zoom classes that I've done. They send me pictures and it's really nice to be able to see their, their finished products. They're so creative. They never do what I start out with. They always do completely different things. Almost finished with this going around. Oh, and then also the gray is on the top of the chimney up here. Now, this is just a guide. If you want to do it differently, you can. And you could do the whole chimney in the red. I didn't do that. I wanted to break it up a little bit. Okay. Like I said, mine is not perfect right now because I'm rushing it. I don't want you to have to sit here and just watch me paint. 
and I'll go back and I'll touch everything up later on, okay? So I have the gray underneath there now. All right, so now I guess we're going to go to, oh, no, I didn't finish the red. No, I just told you to do it and I didn't do it. So put the gray on the top of the chimney. This you need the small brush for. I've even had people now who see these videos and don't even know me from other states and have asked if they could buy a, a piece, especially the candy cane house. That seems to be the most popular. Well, actually the truck was the most popular, but I think the truck they can get anywhere. Whereas the candy cane house I poured, so that's not as readily available from any of the BIS companies. I think I had like three people ask me. I, I did ship one to Pennsylvania. Okay, so I think I have that on there. And I always do that little bit inside too because you, you know, you could see it. You could see when that's out there that you could, you could see the little hole that it doesn't have the gray in it. So I did the gray on that. Okay, so now we'll do the red. Now when you do the red, you can either go over the shutters and put the purple back over it again and the door, I think do the red, definitely do the red on the door. And I believe I did it on the shutters too. I might, in the directions, I might not have said that, but it looks like I did. So it, if it's easier, just go over the whole thing in the red. I think that's much easier to do. But make sure you wash your brush well and you know to get the water out of your brush before you go into another color. You don't want a wet brush or your paint will be running down the piece. So get that out of it. It's always best to go wash it in the sink and then block that color out, that water out of the out of the, um, the brush. Especially red, you don't want to dilute the red. And the red, you do want two coats on the red. All right, well, let's start with the bottom. This red has beautiful coverage. This is Duncan's Barnyard Red, and I find of all the companies, this is the best red. It's a little dark, darker than some of the brighter reds, but I like it a lot. I use it, anytime I use red, I use it. Of course, now with Mako buying Duncan, I don't know what's going to happen to the Barnyard Red. Now, as far as the inside goes, I didn't paint it, but you can. I mean, that's your prerogative. I see some of my paint dripping into the holes here. So you can do that too, at least the part that you can see. Now, I'm finding that the big brush, if you try to do the inside of the windows, you're gonna have a lot of the paint dripping down on the inside. So I'll go back with a smaller brush when I'm finished and do inside the windows with the red. See, the red really covers really well. So if you just kind of back up, if you don't want to do a second coat, and you don't really need a second coat on the windows and the shutters, uh, the, the door window and the shutters, because you're going to be putting the purple over it. But I kind of back up as I'm doing it, so I don't have to do a second coat. And that means, like, I'm, I'm painting this area white, the white area, I'm painting it the red. Okay, but then I back up over what I just went over and that kind of gives me a second coat at the same time I'm doing the first coat. Okay, so now I avoided the hard area. 
Oh, let me move this over a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I avoided up here, so now I'm gonna see if I can do this with the big brush. If not, you can go to the little brush. But if you can work that big brush, it really does a nice job of putting that on. See that? Kind of scoop it. Flatten the hairs of that brush and scoop it across. Now where the shutter is, I know I'm going to have trouble in this. I'm going to take the small brush to do that. But I could do most of this with the big brush. I think you get a better line even when you do it with a big brush. And then we have to do the, the dormer window and the bottom part of the chimney, the bottom part of the chimney and the dormer window also. I don't know if you can hear that wind, but it is windy today. It was only 15 degrees when we got up this morning. So this is a perfect day to do a video. Who wants to go out? Okay. I'll go back and just double check to make sure I got all the big areas. And this is what I mean about double checking and not having to do a second coat. Where I'm sitting it on the table, though, it is pulling it off because it's wet. So you, you have the time to wait and, you know, hold it up and or do the bottom and then come back to it. Because if it gets on here and you turn it upside down, you're going to get it on the roof. I'm doing a little bit of the red inside. So it looks a little neater hard to get the brush in there, but you get whatever you can. This may be the floor area. So when you look at it from the back, can you see that? I have the floor area done. Okay, so now I'm going to put that brush in the water, and I'm going to take my smaller brush. Okay. And I'm going to go into the window area, the windows, with the smaller brush. As you see, my windows are all white in there. And just paint in there with the smaller brush. And if you, if, like I said, if you use the big brush, you're going to get globs of paint dripping on the inside. I already had that happen. So just use the smaller brush and turn it in all directions so you can see all four sides. Okay, that's one window, and even the door, the door window. I thought I had most of that covered, but I missed one side. And then I'll do the other window, and then this little area here above the shutter where I couldn't get, this is in the way, okay, where I couldn't get up on the top there. I'm gonna do that with the small brush too. And first I'll finish the windows. small amount of paint. Like I said, you don't want it dripping on the inside. Okay, now I'll trim under the roof where the shutter is very close to the rim of the, uh, the edge of the roof underneath that we painted gray. So I just fill that in with a small brush. Okay, so now I'm going to go to, see if I can hold this. It looks pretty dry here. Not really. Okay, I'll put that down. See, I got red on my hands. I know if I touch that roof, I'm gonna have the red all over it. So always keep a paper towel handy so you can just rinse your hands a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the chimney and take your smallest brush you have for the chimney and do the edging first. Let's 
Take your time. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and touch up my my gray. I got a little bit of the red on it. If you notice, I have um, purple striping in the bricks, but we'll do that after. This is really dry. Always, when I'm painting in a, anything, I always do my main areas first, the big areas, the background area. So that's the red, the white, and the gray. And then we'll do our detailing on top of that, on top of that. Get the whole thing? I think I did. Okay, so I've got the red on the chimney, and now I'm gonna do the red. Now the red goes over the entire dormer window, and then the purple is dry brushed over the red. See that? Okay. So, like I said, the whole thing, so I'm gonna edge it first. I always find edging first and then filling in the middle is a lot easier than doing it the opposite, but you work however you feel comfortable. Even though I thought I got in all these windows, and as I turn it in different directions, I see what the little spots I miss. So if you turn it upside down, you see spots you missed. Yep, turn it upside down and look in those windows. Oh, wow, I missed a lot of them. You want this red to be very, very dry before you start dry brushing the purple over it too. So if it's very wet, just pause the video and come back to it if you need instruction on it. Like I said, it's a pretty simple piece. Um, when you are painting, also pick one of your colors and paint it on the stick and then you'll glue the stick or with a piece of double stick tape, you'll glue, glue the banner onto the stick. And then you could also put a drop of glue inside the chimney so it doesn't move, because see my moves? I have a red stick here, and it's nice to make it come up over the top a little bit, okay? But you can do whatever you want on it. See, it, it flips back, so if you just put a, a drop of glue at the back end of the stick or the front end of the stick, however you want it, and that'll stay in place without falling over. Still finding spots in the windows. All I always do is put my hands in it. <laughs> okay. This is the most detail on the whole piece. All the shutters are a little detailed also. But you really have to take your time because the red and the white were two big areas to paint, so they were kind of easy. But the dormer window is a little more difficult. And the same thing with the dormer window. Turn it in different directions to see where you've missed inside of the window. Turn it upside down. 
Make sure you get in the corners. Okay. All right. I have that done. I'm going to check my chimney. Make sure I have all that done too. Okay, we're good. I'm sure there's always spots that I've missed, which even sometimes when I paint, I go back the next day and then I say, oh, I missed that and you have to touch it up. So sometimes that's even better. I like to work fast and then I check everything out the next day, make sure that it's all done. And that only takes a few minutes once most of it is all painted. Okay. Alrighty, so now, if you, if you have, uh, or no, let's, let's do the purple first. I'm gonna say something about the dry brushing, but let's, let's do the purple first. So we'll start down on the, the dormer windows, not the dormer windows, the uh, shutters around the windows on the sides, and the door is dry brushed, but the shutters are painted solid. So since the red should be pretty dry, we started that first on the bottom. We can paint the purple right over the top of the shutters. Okay. I'm painting it right on top. Is that better? I keep blocking what I'm doing. You need a nice pointy brush for this. And you're probably gonna need two coats. To color the red. Don't glob it on, it'll take hours to dry. Um, I did a, um, a, a new, something new the other day. I, I did a, a, a Mako Pottery Camp and we, uh, we, we did all glazes, of course. And they had us put the paint on really, really, really heavy and then take a hair dryer and blow dry it and all the paint cracked. So now when it's fired, we'll have cracks in all that paint. And it, it's interesting, it's interesting. So I don't think you could do that with acrylics though. Yeah, could try. I'm just gonna do um, maybe just one window in the video so that you can see and you don't have to wait for me to paint the other ones too. But I'm gonna have to let that dry. That's pretty wet. And then the bottom of the door down there, I left that red and I put dots, but don't do the dots till the end. And I think you should all know you do the dots with the handle of the brush, the back end of the brush. But dots stay wet even longer than the paint that you're applying. So if you do those dots now, you're gonna be smearing them as I'm smearing everything anyway. So, um, all right, so now I'm gonna let those dry for a few minutes and I'm gonna take a little bigger brush and I'm gonna put a little paint. Now you could use a dry brushing brush. I don't have one handy right now. So I'm gonna put a little bit of paint in the brush and blend it into the hairs of the brush on your paper towel and then go across the grain I think that this paint needs to be shaken a little bit more. It's a little thin. Okay, let's see if this is a little thicker now. Okay. Every time I wipe it out, yeah, this is better. Look at the difference on this side. I did it almost solid, but I still tried to keep some of the red showing so it's not really dry brushing i'm actually painting it on but i'm pulling it against the grain so that the red shows in the crevices so it's not completely solid and you're going to need a couple of coats on that you're going to have to let it dry and then go back to it a little more solid at the top Can you see what I'm doing? You can still see the red showing somewhat in the crevices. 
a little bit. You can always go back and draw those lines back in with the red also. But the, the purple's a little thin, so I, you're gonna need two coats on that. And it's hard to do when it's wet. And what did I do in the front? In the front, I kind of just, just edged it neatly. And on the sides, do the same thing. Okay. And then um, I'll let that dry. And I'm gonna try to put another coat of purple on my shutters. My shutters are still a little wet. but you do definitely need two coats. And then a small dry brushing brush will work well on the door. On the door, I did the same thing I did on the dormer roof. Go across the grain, make almost a solid purple door, but try to keep some of the red showing in the crevices. And if you can't, you could go back in with a tiny brush. Or um, when you put it on, if you have a tiny brush that's a little wet, you can pull the purple off of it also against the grain. That only works if you have very little in your brush too. So I'll go one way and then I'll go the other way. I flatten the brush and go the other way. Because if I keep going this way, I'm gonna pull it right onto the, uh, the house itself. So always go from the edge to the middle on both sides. You can go from one side and then go the other side. So that puts the color on, but you know I'm gonna need a second coat. And it keeps some of the red showing in the crevices. All right, while my shutters are drying, I'm gonna take my small brush and I always put a little bit of water in my brush and then blot it out pick up some of the purple roll it roll it on your palette to a point it's a nice point to have on that brush and then you can do the lines in the brick and it's always a good idea to lean your hand to work up in the air like this you're going to shake so if you see my arm is on the table lot of lines. You can put as many lines as you want in there. You go around it first, go all the way around. And then you can do your up and down lines. I'm doing the uh, horizontal lines first and that gives me a guide. The lines that go up and down, they're kind of in, be they're in between. They're not like directly on top of each other. So if you do one to the left like this, if you do one to the right on the rows above and below it. See what I'm saying? Okay, can you see that? They're not directly, the up and down lines are not directly, the vertical lines are not directly on top of each other going up and down. Like the horizontal lines are touching, but the vertical lines are staggered. So that makes it look like bricks. When things are wet, all you do is keep touching everything. So like I said, you're not in a hurry. I need to get it done in the video. So everything is wet and it's probably best if you just wait and don't keep painting while your colors are wet. Let them dry. Okay, oh, 
one more, one more sorry I have here. Okay, you can see I have it all in there. I'll put another one here. Now you make them look like bricks. I hope you can see that. See that? Okay. All right, so now my shutters should be dry enough. I'm gonna go back over the roof first. Because the roof needs a little more solid coverage. Make sure your brush is dry. And again, I put a little purple in the brush and then I blend it into the hairs of the brush before I go on the piece. And it makes such a difference, this coat. This coat gives me almost a solid coverage with still the red showing in the crevices. And I mean, another thing you could do is just paint each slat across it and just keep the red showing. much better that is that time and then do your edge okay oh door I'm gonna go back over the door again because the door needs a second coat like I said from the edge in pull from one side to the center and then turn your brush around and pull from the other side to the center and that'll protect your red from you getting all over the red where you don't want it. Okay, and um, when that's dry, I did a, a red doorknob and I put a little white dot in the center of the doorknob. Now, I also did red lines on the white roof and you go back to your small brush to do that. So my shutters are still a little wet, so I'm going to do my red lines. I'll take my small brush again, put some red in it, and like I said, I always pull it to a nice point so that I keep my point on there. And work from the bottom up. Start here and work up. If you have a nice point on your brush, you get it. Start from the bottom where it's a little thicker and flip up. I got purple on the house. all of them I think I have all of them now now I'm gonna go down underneath because I didn't get all the way down to the gray area and I'm gonna pull it in underneath So, now I'm going to take a little bit of white and dry brush it on the shutters, just on the center of the shutter. See, it's just in the center, right there. And I believe that that's all we have to do on that. Okay, so I'm going to use my small brush again, but if you have a dry brushing brush, use your little dry brushing brush. Put a little bit of white in your brush, take it out on the paper towel, and lay your brush flat. Can you see what I'm doing? Lay your brush flat, like I expect you to answer me. And again, go from the bottom and then the top. So if you keep going down, you're gonna get it on the bottom of the shutter. So come up and go down. See that? And that worked out perfectly. So again, a little bit of paint, blend it into the hairs of the brush, all sides, back and forth. And go down and then come up. Okay, got that? That was pretty simple. 
And if you want, you could put some white dry brushing under the gray also. I had said, you know, if you wanted to do that, it's hardly noticeable, but you can. Okay, I'm gonna do another coat on my red floor in front of the door, the, the little step in front of the door. So the red doesn't look solid there. You can go back and you can check where you think you need some more red, or if you've gone out of the lines with any of the dry brushing, just go back and touch it up. Okay. So now I'm going to do my dots. Um, I don't think you need for me to show you how to paint the stick. I think that's pretty obvious, but I will put the stickers on with you. These are just stickers that I purchased on Amazon. They come in packages and I just cut them up. I gave everybody a dozen, a dozen, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yes, I gave everybody a dozen. I think I have 11 on the house. So I gave you extra in case you wanted to put more. I probably could have used another one on the side here. Um, so I think I'll do the stickers before I do the dots because the dots, like I said, stay wet for a very long time. So the stickers, I'm only gonna put one sticker on just to give you an idea of how, how to do it, which is simple. You just peel it and just be careful when you peel it off that you don't break the heart. So do it from all edges. What I do is I don't just yank it right off. I'll lift each end separately. And then, there you go. Just place it on where you want it. And that's where it stays. I don't wanna put all of them on because I'm gonna to wanna to spray this. Now you, you can also, um, Use a paint-on sealer if you don't want to go outside in this crazy cold weather. They have paint-on sealers. Um, I have some available, but you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Michael's. Um, you know, I'm sure there's other stores that have them also. And then um, I use matte. I don't like gloss on anything. To me, it looks like it was made in China, and I don't like that look. But if you do, I know a lot of people like a very shiny look. So that's your prerogative. So I put um, the stickers, I put one in each section between the red lines, and then I kind of staggered them. See how I mean by staggering them? I put two here, so I put one in the middle above it. And then I have one at the top. And let's go this way. Again, I try to stagger them. So there's two here, and there's one kind of in the middle. All right, so I try to stagger them. All right, and then I'll do the dots so you have an idea of how to do the stickers. That's pretty easy. And I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna do the dots on the shutters. And then you could use a toothpick, you could use the back end of a brush. I always take the color on the handle of the brush and I tap it once to see what the size is. And if you keep going down without dipping, each dot is gonna get smaller and smaller. So I would say dip every two dots, two or three dots, and then go back over them. And I always put the first dot on the palette because it'll probably be big, depending on the size brush that you're using. There you go, see that? And do the other side. And the handle on the door I did in red. Yes, in red. And when the red, and I did it the same way with the back end of the brush. And once the red is dry, then you can go put a little white dot in that. You're probably gonna have to use a toothpick to do. Because it's gonna be, you don't want it the same size as the handle of the brush. Okay, there you go. All right. And then the red. Now, when you wanna make the dot a little bigger and you, you back end of your brush is not making it bigger, I circle it. I take the handle of the brush and I just keep going in a circle and it makes the dot a little bigger, okay? And then once that's dry, I'll go back in with a white dot on that like I did on this one. Okay, do I have everything? I think I have everything on there. All right, and like I said, you're just going to paint the stick and you could do whatever color you want. You could do it purple, you could do it gray. So it matches the top here and you glue it you glue it onto the uh the glue on you know put the glue on the uh, stick and put it onto the back of the sign it's like a cute little hearts that she put on them and then um like i said in here you can either put glue on the side or on the back or in the front however you want it to stay so it doesn't flop over okay 
but I would seal it first before you do that. If you're gonna spray it, especially, I don't think you wanna spray the sign. All right, did I cover everything? I think I covered everything. Okay, so like I said, send me pictures. I wanna see what you're doing. I don't get to see your finished pieces like I do when we're in the libraries live, so send me pictures of your pieces. Um, you have my email on the instructions. And for those of you who don't, if you are interested in anything, you can contact me through Messenger on Facebook under Rosemary Ceramics. I wanna thank all of you, as usual, for being such dedicated uh, students of mine over all these years. And uh, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. And if you have any questions, email me. Thanks again. Bye.